Item number, SCP-775. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. Interaction with SCP-775 is to be carried out via robotic assistance whenever possible. Should direct human interaction be required, all staff must wear the Mark II contained atmosphere armored hazmat suit at all times. Should any tear be found in a suit, the subject must be immediately placed in quarantine and checked for signs of infestation. Containment area must be coated in a layer of plate steel, with all joints and seams made as tight as possible without compromising structural integrity. A two-part airlock seal is to be maintained as the single access point to the containment area. Airlocks will be flooded with bleach. If any unit of SCP-775 is detected within the airlock and remain flooded for five minutes, or until all SCP-775 have been terminated, containment area is to be sprayed with bleach on a monthly basis to maintain population density. Feedings are not to exceed twice data expunged, provided only at the discretion of Site Command. Description SCP-775 appears to be a form of arachnid of the order Ixodida, more commonly known as the Tick. It is of a significantly larger size, with most unengorged adults reaching a size comparable with a U.S. nickel. Coloration varies between black, red, yellow, gray, and various shades of each. Adults possess eight legs, while juveniles possess only six. SCP-775 is capable of making small leaps and travels very rapidly along solid surfaces. SCP-775 shares the trait of a flexible body structure, but is much more robust than the common tick, capable of surviving crushing, cutting, or tearing with little to no damage, and capable of flattening out to slide through 0.25 centimeter gaps. SCP-775 is also capable of swelling up to four times its original size during feeding, although this does slightly hamper its ability to move. The legs of SCP-775 are also very strong and are capable of damaging concrete over time. SCP-775 feeds in a manner similar to the common tick, but more extensively. SCP-775 injects both an enzyme to increase blood flow and one that begins to liquefy other tissues. This enzyme will attack all tissues except those making up the layers of the skin. SCP-775 will then eat the blood and liquefied tissue until it is totally engorged. It will then lay an egg sac containing 20 to 30 new SCP-775 on or near the host subject and then resume feeding. SCP-775 will feed on any vertebrate animals and will continue to feed and reproduce on the host until it is no longer capable of providing nutrients. Young SCP-775 will often burrow under the skin and attempt to feed on liquefying tissues directly. Hosts will eventually be fully hollowed out, with only the outer layers of skin remaining. SCP-775 will then fill the skin with eggs then depart to find a new host. Hosts in advanced stages of infestation are described as taking on a bloated or misshapen form, many times with multiple SCP-775 attached to many places on the body. Nest skins are often filled to the maximum capacity that the skin is capable of holding. SCP-775 is capable of reproducing offspring two days after hatching, with eggs taking 24 to 30 hours to hatch on average. This accelerated life cycle and ability to resist most forms of physical damage cause SCP-775 to undergo an almost continuous population explosion. Bleach appears to be effective in controlling SCP-775, with most dying after several minutes of being submerged. Notes on Recovery SCP-775 was first encountered data expunged. The Stull family appears to have been the first infected. Recovery teams found only an adult male and a juvenile female still living in the home, presumed to be age and age 
Both were in very advanced stages of infestation, making identification difficult. Most members of SCP-775 appear to have attached to the hands, feet, face, and abdomen of the subjects. The remaining family members were found in the basement, being used as nests by SCP-775, with one of the skins already burst and discarded. Several thousand units of SCP-775 were present in the home, and it is unknown if the subjects used as nests were transported to the basement by SCP-775, the remaining family members, or expired there naturally. Evidence collected from the nests indicate that the biology and reproductive cycle of SCP-775 may share aspects with SCP-1655. If nests containing instances of either are discovered, they must be destroyed. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-774, Whistle Bones, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.